You know, an economist once told me that the cure for high prices was high prices. Uh, I must have had a strange look on my face because, thankfully, he went on to explain what he meant, and I have never forgotten. With high prices back in the news, better known as inflation, it can be very confusing for consumers to, to know what to do. We may need to twist the lens and consider high prices from a whole new perspective. The business cycle, interest rates, unemployment and inflation all combine together in a way that, well, honestly, most of us struggle to understand because the explanations are complicated, they're ever-changing, and they're rarely consensual between economists. You know, before there were central banks prior to 1913, the free market determined pricing. The only time there were sharp price increases or inflation was if, for example, there was a drought and a commodity like wheat was in short supply, which would drive up the price for a while. When the central banks get involved, the situation becomes much more complicated and, on, and honestly, a bit beyond the discussion for today. But, but what we know for sure is that the price of things we need to buy has gone up steeply in the last 12 months, and regardless of the reasons, uh, gas and groceries in particular, just cost more. You know, as I wander the aisles of my favorite store, I recall now what the economist meant. There comes a point when the price of normal goods and services becomes unacceptable and buyers refuse to buy. High prices cure high prices. Okay, now I understand. You know, I might pay $6 for a pair of socks, but not $16. I, I might pay $2 for lettuce, but not $8. The cure is for the lettuce and the $16 socks to go on sale. Otherwise, a retailer goes out of business. Then prices fall, buyers start to buy again, and the whole thing starts over. For non-essential items, things that we might want but not need, the cure is even more powerful. Okay, let's consider our typical shopping habits. Despite billions spent on advertising, only 2.4% of online shopping results in a purchase. Now that sounds crazy, but as I reflect on my own habits, it starts to make sense. Browsing versus buying, so hold that thought. Now, department store shoppers are almost as bad. As an example, I rarely go into a grocery store just to look around, but often go to a retail store to browse and leave without buying. Well, why? Why pay for gas to drive to a store, park the car, walk around this huge building, and leave empty-handed? And yet we do. Historians may look back on our odd behavior and might wonder the same thing. We do the same on car lots and, and in antique stores. We window shop and spend hours wandering around. Some people even seem to browse as recreation, which is odd indeed. Okay, as a marketing guy and the person that designs the advertising to get you to buy various products, I'm going to let you in on a big secret. For non-essential items, no matter how great my advertising, the choice to do nothing is my main competitor, not other retailers. When people shop for a new condo or a new car, oh, certainly they compare a little bit. But the conversion rate is extremely low. No matter how good the salesperson might be, the choice to do nothing is invariably the winner. Even in retail on lower cost items, the conversion rate is under 10%. Now, overwhelmingly, during times of high prices, consumers will simply follow the slogan from Lydian Emerson, who happened to be Ralph Waldo Emerson's second wife, back in the 1800s, who said, use it up, wear it out, make it do, or do without. Not the slogan retailers want to hear. Armed with the secret that doing nothing is really doing something, consumers can fight back during times of inflation. Because if the cure for high prices is high prices, retail conversion rates are already low, and now you understand the power of not choosing anything, then simply don't. The retailers will respond, and prices will come down. For savvy grocery shoppers, this effect has already begun. Nearly every day, a large assortment of products are on sale. Now true, not always what I came into the store to buy, but, but at those prices, I can make it work. Stores are responding because they have to. Even gas stations have felt the pinch of customers cutting back and driving a little less. Supply chains are improving and goods and services are flowing much better than the last few years. Yes, true, recessions and inflation are part of the business cycle, yet it's less understood how much control consumers have to lengthen or shorten these cycles. Our central bankers and economists, well, they have a lot of power. But the power of the almighty dollar and the power of choice lies squarely in our hands.